Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon. I'm, my name is Miguel Duarte. I'm here with my colleague uh, Kike. We both work for Red Hat in the OpenShift virtualization uh, networking team. And we are here uh, to present a talk about, uh, titled Kubevert VMs All the Way Down, a custom sized networking solution for the cluster API provider Kubevert. Okay, so uh, before uh, all that clicks into place and you understand what we're talking about, because we really don't know like how savvy you are in either Kubevert, Cluster API Provider, and all that, we're going to introduce these three projects. Kubevert, Cluster API Provider Kubevert, and Oven Kubernetes. Once we have a common understanding about those three projects, we can actually explain our motivation, like why we care about this and what problem we're trying to solve, the goals for, our, for the, the um, network plugin that we want to develop. And after that, uh, Kike is going to uh, walk us through the implementation details of this solution and show us a demo for it. Okay, so the first thing, uh, we're going to introduce Kubevert. So Kubevert, first thing, is a Kubernetes plugin. It allows you to run virtual machines and, uh, and pods in the same platform. It essentially runs like um, libvirt and QAML process inside of the pod, and uh, that's pretty much what it does. The tricky thing here is if you spend a few seconds to think about this, you have like a virtual machine, which is inherently a stateful entity that is scheduled and running inside of a pod, which is essentially a stateless entity on the cluster. So those things will make some tricky things in the future. And one last thing we should uh, always have in mind in this scenario is that the networking requirements for virtual machines are a lot tougher than the ones for a pod mostly because of live migration. That's kind of the, the feature we will, will live and die or live or die based on. Like live migration will be our bread and butter for this uh, presentation. Skip this one. So let me just introduce to you the, this project, the Cluster API Provider Kubevert. So Cluster API is something that in their own words, what it does is provide a declarative Kubernetes style API to cluster creation, configuration, and management. So all this means that the same thing you can do with, I don't know, Ansible or Terraform or whatever to provision a new cluster, you can use this tool and it will deploy, it will end you a new Kubernetes cluster. It has different types of providers, uh, AWS, Google, Azure. There's also a particular provider, the one we care about, that is Kubevert. So this means that the cluster that you get is implemented using um, Kubevert virtual machines as Kubernetes nodes. This begs the question of why would you want to do this? Uh, one of the reasons, like cluster scale. Uh, you can have like one very dense, huge cluster with thousands of nodes and tens of thousands of pods, but I'd say that's really hard to manage and re you won't see many of those. It's a lot more common to have a lot of tinier clusters interconnected between themselves. Another use case for uh, this is like you have a cheap cluster provisioner that you can use for stuff like CI, for instance. You want to test your feature or you want to test how does, I don't know, your application survive a DNS upgrade or something? You just create a cluster, you run your test, you tear down the cluster at the end, and you're done. Finally, let's introduce the Oven and Oven Kubernetes projects. So Oven is essentially like uh, an SDN control plane that orchestrates a bunch of open vSwitches that run on your uh, worker nodes. Its uh, value proposition is of um, allowing you to use like a higher level abstraction that you'd get from uh, Open vSwitch. So instead of you getting to manage like uh, logical uh, to manage OpenFlow, what you get manage are th stuff like logical switches, logical routers, ACLs, and these will afterwards be compiled into OpenFlow and installed in the nodes of your uh, cluster. So if this is Oven, we then have Oven Kubernetes, which is a CNI plugin 
that provides an opinionated topology and essentially translates Kubernetes objects to often logical entities. So let's say that you provision a network policy on your cluster. Often Kubernetes will translate that into a set of um, ACLs. And those ACLs will essentially be translated to uh, OpenFlow that will be installed on the nodes. Same thing with, let's say, services, these kinds of things. That's its task. Translate from Kubernetes object to often logical entity. Okay, with all these things in mind, we can, uh, we're good to go on the motivation. So our thing is we want to decouple the node updates from the tenant cluster VMs using live migration. What I mean by this. So remember that your cluster API provider, Kubevert, it gives you Kubernetes clusters and it implements its nodes as Kubevert VMs which is a Kubernetes plugin. So you get essentially like Kubernetes inside of Kubernetes. And we call the, let's say the topmost cluster, it's the infra cluster, the bottom ones, the ones that uh, are being provisioned by this tool are the tenant clusters. So let's say that you want to upgrade your infrastructure cluster. Well, that will, we don't want it to impact the workloads of your tenants underneath. That cannot happen at all. For that, we will rely on live migration the entire time. And essentially what we have today does not provide live migration. It simply does not give us what, what we want. And for that, you will see the wacky thing that Kike came up with. Uh, why Oven in the middle of all this? Why should we go for, for Oven? Well, other projects like OpenStack, they're already le uh, using that technology and uh, with really good results. Like you have like, uh, using some improvements, you get like a, a, um, a migration downtime of around 100 milliseconds, which is extremely good. And we wanna strive for those numbers, so that's wh where we're trying to go for. Okay, so we know what we want, but now we have to set explicit goals on our network plugin. So the first thing is the TCP connections that are established on the node, basically for kubelet and for the workloads of your tenants, they must survive the migration. Like once the, um, let's say the Kubernetes node that is essentially a Kubert VM migrates from one place to another, everything that it is running must survive moving to a different node. Another thing, the IP and gateway configuration on that worker node, it must remain the same. It cannot be updated during, uh, in the, it, during the migration. Why? Well, for instance, Kubelet is bound to that IP address. If it changes the IP, Kubelet will basically go bananas and like your workloads will be impacted. Uh, another goal that we have is that um, a tenant cluster cannot access anything on another tenant cluster unless that uh, tenant exposes it, it via services. Also, a tenant cluster cannot access anything in the infrastructure cl cluster unless it is also exposed via a service. And we need to do that for two types of services, node port and load balancers. And I'm now handing this to Kike, so. Uh, so hello, again my name is Kike, uh, I'm a software engineer at QB Networking uh, and we have tried to fight uh, multiple products to have some kind of like migration uh, proof of concept. Uh, so what we are going to see right now is like uh, we, the big points that we need uh, implementation wise. So. What we need is uh, to implement live migration in the, in the cluster default network. Not doing it in a secondary network, not doing it in the future feature from OVN Kubernetes multi-homing, in the default network. We will see later on why is that, why we want it in the, in the default network, right? That's, uh, we also uh, don't want to set uh, the IP address in the pod, 
we want to bypass as much as possible uh, the networking inside the pod and pass all the information to the VMs. So kind of Kubernetes is not uh, in the middle. So for that, we configure DHCP options from OVN in the logical switch port, which means like we kind of prepare a DHCP server so the VM can consume this IP configuration, right? Uh, also, uh, we copy some mechanism from Calico. Uh, like they use something that is called IRP proxy. And what it means is like uh, some parts of the topology, you can configure some parameters uh, that is able to answer uh, from a foreign uh, IP address that, that, that doesn't correspond to the subnet uh, at this level. So for that, this is how uh, we implement uh, ARPs for the default gateway. So the VMs has always the, the same default gateway, independently of, of the node where they are running. And also the neighbor cache is exactly the same. Uh, OK, so now we are going to see the topology of the, of the communication for the north-south communication, right? The, 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 the most uh, north part. This is going to be exactly the same uh, before and after the migration, but the important part here are this IP address here and here, because this is the IP addresses that we use to redirect, to do the point-to-point -point routing during live migration, right? As we see here in these tags. All right, uh, in the next we see the, the lower part of the topology, like the slide before is like uh, the upper part of the topology. This is the down part of the topology. And this is where the point-to-point -point routing is, is, work, is, is being done. Uh, and for that, uh, we have uh, two uh, important uh, OVN resources to configure egress and ingress. All right, we have something that in OVN is called policy, and we use it for egress. So we say, okay, uh, for uh, go, uh, traffic going for the, from this IP, uh, we want to go over this node with this IP, right? This IP is uh, the same IP address as I have like pointed out in the slide before. Then we have like uh, another thing, which is a static root, and we use it for the ingress communication. So it's kind kind of the opposite. Like, okay, uh, if traffic traffic is for this IP address, you go over this port. All right. So so also uh, another thing that we configure in the topology if the is the IRP proxy, and as you see, and this is very important, uh, the IRP proxy is exactly the same for both nodes. With this, they are, the VMs are going to have exactly the same default gateway. Uh, independently of the node, and most important, the neighbor cache is going to be the same. So there is no need for updates in the neighbor, neighbor cache. So we, the, the downtime after line migration is slower. So the idea is to, to maintain as much as possible the network configuration uh, during line migration. Okay, another important part here is, as we say, uh, the configuration of the DHCP options. So this is a kind of OVN term terminology to start a kind of a DHCP server, right? So what it does is just it, it serves the IP configuration to VMs uh, over, over DHCP. Uh, and another important part is here. The pod, the network namespace in the pod the interface, is not configured at all. So this is just L2 communication. So IP configuration doesn't make, let's say, noise during the migration. And it's just a L2 link between the VM and OVN. And of course, the VM is residing uh, the IP address uh, over the HTTP. OK, then we are going to see how this uh, button part of the topology looks after the migration. Uh, as you see, is kind of the mirror. And so everything here is exactly the same. The only thing that it changes is for the for the egress traffic, this IP, which means like okay, now I in this node, so I want my my egress traffic uh, to go over this node that has this IP address. 
And the same thing for the ingress traffic, right? So what we do is the same IP, but we say, okay, now I want to, to redirect this to the port of the node 2. Um, and this is the topology. Now we are going to do a real demo. This is, I'm going to explain with a bit of slides very quick the demo we are doing. It's super simple, but maybe it's, very, it's good for illustrating things up. So what we have to do is uh, we have like a pair of nodes, uh, we have a hashtag cluster at the end, and, and we have the worker PMs, right? So we have a client, uh, a client pod that opens just yes, one TCP connection to a server with some super dummy software that we have put there with the name TCP proof. We just open one connection, and if it gets broken, the server goes down. So it's easy to see, like, the pod. See, if the pod is, go, is down, the TCP connection is broken, which is, which is uh, very important for us. And then what we do? We do a live migration, and in the same hosted cluster, the pod goes from one node to the other, and the TCP connection are kept. All right. So let's go with the demo. Okay, so uh, before I start, let's explain what we have here. So uh, the first part is the latency between uh, request and response in the client, uh, in, the, uh, in the client what we have seen. And in the bottom part of it, what we see is like uh, the two pods that implements like migration in Kubir. Because in Kubir, as uh, Miguel has said, like all the VMs are back, back up by a pod. And during like migration, you have one pod in one node and another pod in another node. And there is one moment where the where Libre communicates a state between one pod to another and then one of the pods dies and the lab migration has end. So we will see here the latency and here the pods of the of Kubir, right? And uh, we see here one pod is in one node and the other is in the, in the other node and we see here the state. Okay, let's start. Okay, now it has to start. Uh, the latency, and in one moment we will migrate it. All right. And then you see here in the status that is the target pod in the target node is running. Now they are communicating the state between the two nodes using a libbeer mechanism, like memory page and the like. They are communicating. And now the old pod in the old node is going to be not ready. And and uh, migration is done. So what is happening here is like uh, this proof of concept we are doing is not perfect. It's not perfect, but uh, what we want to accomplish is uh, like the TCP connection is kept, which is good enough for us. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for us. And this is what it is. Uh, there is nothing more here. And what we have the rest of it is like we do again a live migration. So we see also the same IP address. All right, and uh, same happens, but in the opposite direction. And then a uh, spike we are up here with, I know it's not perfect, but it's good enough for us for now. We have some ideas to improve it, like in OpenStack they use something that they call multi-requested chassises, and we will see what we do with that. And that's it. Alright. Uh, okay, conclusions. So now we explain why we are doing it. Uh, in the default network, instead of using a secondary network where we have like more, more possible to change things up. Uh, well, uh, in the world of tenant clusters, we need to use a lot of Kubernetes mechanism to implement, com implement communication with the API server that is running in the infra cluster, in the management cluster. Uh, so for that, using the default network, we have a lot of stuff for free. Uh, we have 
access to services. Uh, also, we have isolation. We have like the network policies. We have all of this. Uh, then uh, we have seen that you see point-to-point -point routing in the primary interfaces. So we have we can make the TCP connection survive and has a consistent IP address that follows the VM during the migration, right? And now with these points, what we discover is like, like we know how this, pro this proof of concept works and we can start to implement it and improve it like little by little. And, and that's it. Questions? All right. All right. So during the whole migration, it means that a doctor in the port of call is reaching out to a call center to talk about a service that is missing. Would that still work? I mean, you are going to have. Uh, so the question is about uh, what's going to happen, if I understand correctly, what's going to happen when you receive, the, when they try to access the pod during live migration, right? So it depends, like uh, if the TCP connection is already open before live migration, uh, as we have said, the, com the connection is not going to, to broke, but you are going to receive some latencies in the packages. Uh, if you are going to establish a new connection during live migration, it's possible that you are going to, your client is going to retry until it can, uh, at Linita, it can establish the connection. So it's something like uh, half a second now, something like that. I know it sounds like super bad, but it's just a proof of concept. So this is how it's going to behave. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, you said the gateway to get the state. Yeah. Uh, no, because uh, in OVM, uh, not OVM, sorry, in OVM Kubernetes, you have different logical switches per node. So all the L2 traffic doesn't escape the node. So even the MAC address and the default gateway has the same IP address, since L2 is cut in the node, it's not going to traverse uh, to the other node. Like you have like different switches for for each node. So even if this, even if the same the IRP, when you know when when you use the four gateways, what it does is just replace the MAC address with. The, so this this thing doesn't uh, goes to the other node because L2 is going to be only in that node, and you have the the distributed router on top of it. You know it makes sense. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are not breaking it. We are like, I don't. Uh, yeah, the question is like, this is. It feels a little. If I understand it correctly, it feels a little like we are breaking what is expected for new, for for Kubernetes networking, right? Like, you have two different pods. They should have like different IP addresses. Yeah, that's why we are using like point-to-point -point routine because like the, let's say that like if the pod is in a very foreign node that only understand about subnets, that's why we need so these mechanisms. We are kind of, uh, I don't know how to word to put it, like making it more flexible, like fighting it a little. It's, it's, a very, it's, it's not a general purpose pod, it's for a very specific thing, like it's a backend for Kubert. We, I don't know if we are going to use it for everything, uh, for something that is not Kuber, but yes, we know that. But people is happy about it because <laughs> we prefer to have like migration than maybe be strictly about this one. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Something else. 
Okay, thank you.